Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial on Evolver FX. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to how you can use the sequencer in Evolver FX. We'll go through the settings, the main ones of the sequencer, and we will create a simple performance. So let's start clicking on the new button. Let's enter test as a name for the performance. This will be saved in the user bank. Let's click on create. We just happen to already have a performance with that name, so we are going to overwrite over it. So we click yes, and then we click OK to confirm. Now we have created a new performance. So we are on line A. It is enabled as the sequencer is enabled. So for now, let's disable the sequencer and let's scroll down to the sequencer view, like so. Right. So let's start from the top. On the top, what you can see is a view of steps. So you have one to 16 steps. And the first four are active. So you can see the little colors in the little dot colored, which signifies also the length, uh, uh, the duration of each step. You can go up to the next uh, set of 16 steps. So up to 32, 48, and to a maximum of 64. And of course, you can move back and uh, click on the left arrow. So in this way, you can access all the 64 steps. At the bottom here, you see a selection between timing, samples, notes, and arpeggiato. Let's stick to timings for now. We have now set the timing length to four, one, two, three, four, four steps. If you click on the timing length, you can change the length of those, um, or the number of steps which are active. We can synchronize to tempo, which will make the speed multiplier in terms of quickly you move from one step to the other, sync to tempo. At the moment, as you can see, it's moving up and down in a very fine way. If you click sync to tempo, you will actually you have synchronized tempo. Okay, which will help you also to synchronize to the notes duration or uh, which you find here at the bottom. There are a number of other options here, like reset note uh, lane on loop, etc., which we'll look at those later on. So for the time being, um, let's look at the four steps which are active. They all have a yellow dot, which means, looking at the bottom here, that each step have a duration of a quarter. You can go in on another step and change the duration, like so, one-eighth. In this case, you will change the duration of step number two, like so. If you click and hold on one eighth, all the steps will change the, the duration. Now, for the purpose of the tutorial, let's click on one fourth, click and hold, and so all the uh, defined uh, steps and the time and length will be changed to one one fourth of a length. As I just mentioned, we'll come back to the other option which are in this view. For now, um, follow me through in terms of creating a first bit, which is important in terms of learning how to use the sequencer. Let's go to the samples uh, section now. Remember, you're still on line, uh, on lane number A, okay, or lane A. So in here, you can se select your sample that you're going to use for each step. You have up to 16 samples, and you have different time for samples. For the purpose of this video, we are going to use just the multi sample for now. But in other videos, we will introduce the single sample, harmonics, and other things you can do with those. Let's click on the first sample. As you can see, it tells you that it is a type of multi sample, empty dark strings. Let's click on multi sample. Let's go to drums and let's select EDM kit and click close. Now, if you click on the keyboard, there is a different sample for each key. So let's scroll down to C3. Okay, this is where uh, you can you can use your kick drum and something like your snare. Okay, that will do for now. So again, I'll come back to all of those options later on. Let's click on the notes now. Here we have four, two steps which are active. As you can see, the number of steps in the notes don't have to be the same number of steps which you have in the timing. So, in the case of creating a simple drum bit, let's define, for example, the same length. Four notes with four timings are specified in these 
a tab okay of duration of a quarter so for each one of them you can set if it is a note of tab transpose which will change on the page if it is fixed note which will not change on the page or if it is no note for a drum we don't want that to change in terms of pitch so we'll click fixed note so the way that now you can set uh, the note for each of the step if you're on step one you click record it will ask you to type on the keyboard so you type c3 and that note will be recorded against the step or another way to do that is to click step record and as you click on the notes on the keyboard you, on the keyboard you will move to the next step so in this case right so as you can see we recorded four notes for four different steps now you move from one step to the other defined it as defined in the timing tab which says you have four different steps of the duration of a quarter now let's test this and let's move back up let's enable the sequencer and let's click on a key of the keyboard okay now let's move uh, below look at the timing you can see the sequencer is enabled it moves from one to the other okay from one step to the other let's click on the keyboard okay so hopefully you understand now that you can set timing in this tab in the timing tabs and you can set the notes on the notes tab okay so let's do another example to make these uh, hopefully a little bit clearer so now we have four step each one is of a quarter let's make it more interesting so let's go to step number three and define that as one eighth also step number four we are going to define that as one eighth then we change the timing length to five and on step number five we set that as a quarter let's go to notes let's go to the first step let's set the length the same and let's do something like a uh, kick um snare then double kick and snare right so you still have four uh quarters in total as a length but two of them as of length one eighth so we are clicking on the first uh, we click on the first step we click step record and we record okay so now let's test it again you can do it here if you have um, enabled the sequencer or if not you need to go back to the top and enable it so hopefully now you can see how you can define timing associated to notes as well and if you go back to the timing um, tab now hopefully you understand that changing some of these options will affect how the timing uh, is behaving versus the note tab. for example you can say reset the note lane when we come to the end of this loop okay so and that is particularly important when you have different number of steps between the timing and the notes so you might have a, a shorter timing and a longer notes or vice versa in this case also two other options are enabled the reset timing lay on key which means that the timing will start every time you click on the keyboard look at the red uh, um, bar and you can see it start from the beginning every time i click 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 and here it says reset the note lane within time lane which therefore will make this synchronization between the time and the notes okay because they will be reset accordingly to each other other things you will see here is you have two other buttons you have a latch to enable the latch so if you click on it It will click play because the latch um, feature is enabled but also because for this lane the support latch is active so that means that lane number a or lane a is supporting the latch because 
you may want in some cases some lanes not supporting the latch okay this is to enable and this is to specify for this lane that it the, the uh, latch is supported now that we have defined one lane let's deactivate for now the sequencer and then so the enable for line a let's go to line b let's enable that line b now let's go to uh, the sequencer again and let's go to timing um, let's define now um, eight steps okay let's define them all of one eighth so we still uh, have in total a length of four quarters but specified as eighth steps of one eighth we we'll leave the speed multiplier as, as it is but you can change that and remember if you change these to different speed you might have one lane going at different speed than other lanes which we'll show you in another example let's go to samples again let's set the samples now for uh, this lane lane b let's click on multi sample let's click on the base and let's uh, scroll up and select the dry base okay perfect now let's go to the nodes let's define here again the length um, to eight to match the timing length but you don't have to do that let's set the node type to transpose because you want um, to be able to move the baseline from one key to the other so it needs to be of type transpose and also let's select the play mode to base which means that if you play a chord it will select always the lowest note of what you're playing the keyboard so now that we have transpose on we click we have a steps they're all defined what we are going to do we are going to create a bit of pattern so the first two are active the third one we select to no note then fourth active then we repeat a group of four the first two active number seven not active and there are other parameters that you can change of course for uh, um, uh, for the bits you are creating um, again uh, we'll go through those uh, in a moment so let's go back up let's see enable this the sequencer for lane b and let's try to test what we have created <laughs> Okay, let's enable then line A. Oh, um, yeah, lane lane A. Sorry, I keep saying line, and and also the sequencer, and let's try. Okay, so we have two lanes which are enabled. Okay, let's disable uh, these again. Let's go to lane C. Let's do something different now let's go on timing um, let's set these uh, to um, to four step that will do um, the length of the step a quarter that will do the multiplier will leave it as it is probability you can set you can change that for each step if you want uh, uh, to give a different probability of that step being played or not is up to you for each step you can of course define it changing accordingly from a sample perspective we want to uh, probably bring in something like a lead wrap lead it will do let's try it oops sorry let's disable uh, lane a and b enable ac which i haven't done apology so in here let's test it okay that will do you can also change settings like octave or that patch up and down the pan and also the volume okay pan in terms of um, left and right channel in terms of, of the positioning and of course the volume specified for each of the sample we we'll go through those uh, other option in another tutorial now that we have done that let's go to um let's actually um yeah go back to the, go to the notes tab define these um the length as four to match the timing to make it simpler let's keep it as a transpose so we, keep, we will move as a pitch uh, we leave other settings like the step pitch the velocity and the probability and also the step gate in terms of the length of, of that gate will be 
um, kept open for that particular step, which you can change, of course, for all the different steps. And um, let's change. Let's ensure that the tie, the play mode is code as well. And let's play some code in the keyboard. Okay, so let's activate the sequencer for lane C. Okay, as uh, uh, you can see, this is what is happening. Let's uh, go to step number two, let's set it to no note, and also to step number four, and let's set it to do no notes. So the four um, the chords will be played for step one and three. Okay. Now that we have defined uh, a little bit what lane uh, C, uh, how lane C should behave, let's enable lane A, B, and also let's enable the corresponding sequencer and let's play a little bit on the keyboard. So as you can see, very, uh, very interesting, very interesting um, settings, very interesting things you can achieve with uh, uh, Evolver FX. Um, I'm going to stop here for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we are going to look at other play order. We are going to introduce the arpeggiator as well, and we will continue to explore uh, the functionality of uh, the sequencer. I hope you found this useful and uh, see you next time. Bye!